So thanks for joining us again. Uh, would you mind just introducing yourself, saying your name, uh, where you're from? All right. So, uh, yeah, my name is Mats, uh, Mats Nielsen from uh, Denmark. And I've been here f in Korea uh, for quite a while, since I think 94, I think, yeah, 1994. Wow. That's a long time. That's like almost 25 years then. Ah, <laughs> oh, really? <Yeah. laughs> nah, 24 can't years. Be, can't, nah, <laughs> no, it can't be that long. Right? It's impossible. <laughs> right. So, yeah, many people may not know that Goal's been around now for this is its 20th year in existence. Um, and, of course, adoptees have been coming to Korea before that as well. Um, I know the... Organization started about 20 years ago, and like yourself, there are adoptees that have lived in Korea for quite a long time, even before there was a organization like Goal. Right. So yeah, I just wanted to talk to uh, people like yourself that have been here uh, for during that time. Can you describe originally when when you were here uh, first, like those first couple years, or when Goal started? Like what the adoptee community was like, if there was one at the time. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't. Yeah, when Gold first started, there wasn't really a uh, community. I would say, um, if if we if we would extend the uh, the term community, it would extend only to those adoptees who lived in Seoul at that time, and and knew each other. So there was a bunch of people, a group of people, uh, who knew each other, and um, that basically that would be the. Uh, community at that time so probably the commu uh, gold community started with uh, with the founders with the founders of gold they got together and had this idea so I guess that might be the start of the uh, community but other than that there wasn't really a tight well a big a big group of people we can call community really in the in, in the sense that we have today right basically you you were left on your own to you know to do whatever you wanted or needed to do, and uh, the way the way people got to know each other was through, you know, uh, other people knowing that they were in Korea and you might have uh, some connection with them from some other adoptees, and so you would contact them. They would contact them when they came to Korea and maybe uh, ask for some help or whatever. Yeah. So I guess that's that's basically the community at that time. A lot different from now, obviously. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you got a network right now. Yeah. That time it's like knowing someone or mouth to mouth. Right. Yeah. So in relation to that, uh, when Gold was first starting, I guess what were the most needed service or support that adoptees needed when they uh, first started kind Pro of moving back to Korea at that time? Probably the uh, most important need or thing they wanted was um, help with the birth, birth family searches. So so they had no really um, idea how to do this, but uh, the, there was a um, was an adoptee named Mihi, Mihi Limoy from Belgium. She, uh, she did a lot, she did a lot of uh, uh, searches. So that she was the person to go to if you wanted help with that at that time. She uh, believes is also one of the uh, founding, one of the founders of of Goal. So at the time, uh, besides that, I'm guessing there are also challenges with say like finding a job or like kind of getting settled into the Korean community since there wasn't necessarily the structure there is now yeah. for the visa and and other services that are provided by yes. other organizations. Yes, definitely the problem with the it was, a, it was difficult to find a job a real a proper job right so the way you could do is uh, get a job was mainly just teach languages English for instance the main language privately tutoring getting tutoring jobs but that would require that you knew someone who was teaching and who could help you out with that so oh there was no really uh, no organized no organized help so you were left to fend for yourself when you first came to Korea. But so, yes, both, both family search, then job, then the visa was a major problem. You would come here to, you would come to Korea on a yeah, tourist visa and you could do all these sorts of shady kind of work <laughs> <laughs> without a proper visa, just as long as you don't, didn't get caught. Right? You could do a lot of things in Korea at that time. Uh, that wasn't really legal, right? Just, and it was pretty difficult to get caught, so. You will get away with a lot of stuff. 
Right. I guess that's to yeah. our benefit, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. As things have changed since then, but uh, yeah. So these, I think, those those are the three main areas that uh, the FWs need help in. Housing also. Oh yes, yeah. housing is important. Yes, because you need it. You know, you need key money to get a proper proper house, but. Uh, the way you could do it was to do uh, hassle chips. Right. Okay. That, was, that was pretty cheap back then, so that was uh, that was one possibility. But that top just without a job or a tutoring job would be kind of difficult to to finance that, unless they had you know savings. Mm -hmm. So, with the different needs we discussed uh, and then goal starting. Um, way back then. Um, was Goal able to kind of cover some of those needs uh, when they first started or do you think uh, it maybe took, uh, obviously it would take them a little while to establish themselves? But. Well that was the, I think according to Amy, that was the purpose of Goal to help out the doctors who came to Korea. Help out with uh, finding a place to stay, right, finding a job, visa problems and of course with the uh, mandatory uh, both families uh, services right so that um, then I don't know if it was a plan to get people to come together but I think that was uh, just naturally became part of the uh, part of the plan automatically mm -hmm. to provide them with some sort of a, a place to stay and if possible you know uh, help them with um, finding a job and also translation mm -hmm. in case they found the uh, birth family or during the search you know the uh, they would go to the um, adoption agencies right. they would need translators for that so the uh, go provided uh, those uh, members also with, uh, with translation because I know now the, the government and as well as many other organizations are providing services um, but at that time my impression is the government didn't really have much of a say or hand in adoption uh, as much as they do now. Um, they kind of left it to run, be run by the agencies. And while it still is run by the yes. agencies today, yes. it's they do have kind of a a, yeah. a watchful eye. Not not as much involvement as maybe we'd like, but <laughs> yeah. kind of a watchful glance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, well, the adoption agencies they are all private, so right. it's, an, it's a non-government government enterprise right so yeah when the uh, goal started there wasn't any uh, any uh, any organization to provide those services and those services now that the government provides uh, and other organizations all derive from from uh, from goal goal started it all well I'm not saying that it started all the, uh, the uh, modern and tours for instance, for instance, Seoul YWCA, they mm -hmm. had this uh, summer camp every year, I think, yeah. So, but they didn't provide any other services. During the, ah, I remember during those um, summer camps, they could, uh, you could request to visit, um, uh, what is it, so, uh, the adoption centers. Oh. Mm. And there were a few, few cases where actually, Adoptees were uh, reunited with the family. I think they had a lot of participants from all over the world. I think they started out with um, mixing Americans and Europeans together, and later on, I think they divided into the American group and then a European group. Uh, that's interesting. I didn't know that they had that. <laughs> At least in my eyes, in terms of services and, and access to even information, I think it's improved a lot uh, over time. But I'm sure there may be things that have gotten worse or other things that have gotten better uh, for adoptees. So what do you think has changed kind of for better or worse for adoptees? Uh, we talked about the services um, improving, but I don't know, there, since you've been here for a while, maybe there's other things you noticed or have insight into that you know, an uh, adoptee that flies here today wouldn't be aware of because there there are so many things uh, that have changed and things change so quickly right. in Korea too. Well, the awareness uh, around adoption in general and then uh, overseas or international adoption in Korean society has definitely uh, uh, increased. People, the general public is 
more aware of it. They know about adoption in general, uh, especially domestic adoption, but they're also kind of aware of uh, international mm -hmm. adoption, but still not not so educated in the in the problems of of early of early international adoption adoption cases, right? So, so they're not they know adoption, domestic adoption, international adoption, but they're not fully aware of the uh, the history. Mm -hmm. Of international adoption. Uh, in that in that respect, uh, it has been more. It's been easier for adoptees to re to to be recognised as an adoptee or to come out as an adoptee or say that they're an adoptee. People understand what that means now. Before, in the earlier years, it was kind of a you had to explain what it was. Mm -hmm. Oh, what do you mean, adopted? Oh, are you Korean? Yes, but I'm not. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so, you don't you don't really need to explain that. When it comes to adoption, well, it's there's been an effort. There's been an effort to kind of put it into a uh, in a better in a better light, especially domestic adoption. It's been camp. There's been several years ago. There's been a campaign for you know Koreans adopting. Korean babies or mm -hmm. children. I've seen the campaign yes. posters yeah. in the subway. So in that respect, you might say that's, that is kind of a progress, right? Then the, uh, there's the whole issue of, um, of the uh, abolishment of international adoption. I mean, that's, yeah, on a social level, I'm not so sure how great it is, because that's just one aspect of this social, social problem. Right, but for a lot of uh, adoptees, especially the older generation, that that was welcome news, right? Um, but for the uh, individual Korean child in Korea, you know, um, uh, in a society where government and culture really don't care about them, uh, I don't know how how great that is, how positive thing it is. Mm. Yeah, for for me, like I've been to a couple meetings at the National Assembly and also different meetings with community groups around and I don't know if we're at the point where we can have one big solution to all of those societal yeah. changes that need yeah. to happen <laughs> that need to, uh, you know, incorporate social welfare and, uh, you know, social work and, um, right. you know, general support for Koreans, like, to yeah. just survive here. <laughs> yes, well, so. <laughs> well, it's, well, basically, it is a Korean problem, it's a mm -hmm. Korean social problem, which they have to deal with, right? Mm -hmm. But um, just um, so I'm just saying, I'm not sure how how how, how positive an effect that the uh, that the stuff of overseas adoption has has on has on domestic affairs. And like you said, uh, right now. It's easier to say if you're adopted than people kind of understand what that means. Even me, when I first came back to Korea like uh, six years ago, for the first time, people were still not that sure about it, right. what it meant, yeah. or they were surprised, yeah. or they didn't know how to react, or they just were yeah. ignorant about it. They just yeah. were like, oh, okay, I guess that happened. Like, uh, But yeah, we had touched on like maybe social changes that need to happen, or is there any other changes that you've seen socially or, or otherwise relating to adoptees in Korea um, besides like adoption has been easier to talk about like it's more recognized now both domestic and international um, any other kind of societal changes you've seen that have influenced the adoptee community we'll say here <laughs> um, I don't know really know I know the yeah, the government has the has the, uh, the the different organization that that was that were established later on I wouldn't say that's so much a governmental thing but probably individual individual Koreans wanting to to, uh, to make things better to do a uh, to, to make a difference mm -hmm. and then I think CAS mm -hmm. CAS CAS, CAS, whatever it is, <laughs> is, um, is a government institution. Mm -hmm. Right. So in that respect, there might, yeah, the awareness has increased and there's an overall, uh, the ignorance is not so widespread anymore. Right. That's good. Then, of course, the uh, probably one of the best 
things that happened was the uh, was there for a visa. Mm-hmm. Right. Got that. Made it very um was very helpful for adoptees to to make um to make a life. Right. Or simply just to stay in Korea right. for a long period of time. So can I include like the dual nationality? Oh as yeah, well? yes, ability yes. to get the yes. dual nationality. Yes. Yeah. These days a lot of people are more curious about that because of the new laws they're implementing regarding uh, you know, qualifying for the F four visa and, and dual right. uh relating to military service and such like that. So We've gotten a lot of questions about that. <laughs> yes. The thing is, I think the Korean law says that if you are, if you have no parents, if you're an orphan, you can't do military service, you accept. Right. And I think right. it also goes for uh, if you're an adoptee. Yeah, I mean, we had our board member look at it, yeah. and they think they're going to have to make another uh, section or addendum to the law because it doesn't quite specifically mentioned right. us right. in it but we uh, of course most of us are have a, are orphans so yes. we were, retain our exception well, but people get worried <laughs> on paper on paper we are orphans yeah all paper all papers um, it, um official documents states that we are orphans which is not true <laughs> in many cases yes. <laughs> but going with the official papers we should actually be accept for for military service I think we, we covered like all the questions I had uh, I had sent you in advance so um, if you have any other things you wanted to add in general about uh, history of adoptees here in Korea or just your thoughts about the history of goal and and what it's uh, it's, it's relation to the adoptee community what it has or hasn't done <laughs> any things you 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 look forward to in the future or uh, are reminiscing about the past <laughs> either no. one uh, well I remember the uh, during the whole uh, the, well during its um well during its establishment and up till now it's the main problem for gold is uh, has always been uh, financial mm. right uh, always struggle Need to find uh, sponsors, mm. and the you know, the fund they get the funds they get from uh, the government is is part of the budget. You you have to make you it can it's not a uh, they don't just give out money to the organization. Right. You have you know, you know that. So. Right. Right. So that's that's a major that's always been a major problem. And I think in order to really have go run smoothly, it's yeah that's the first thing you should that should be solved is that. Uh-huh. A financial problem, right. some steady source of funding. <laughs> yes, yes. Always. <laughs> yeah, and I think the only reason that goal is still running or has been able to run this long year is actually uh, is Amy Nevska. Uh-huh. Right, she was the driving force behind behind the uh, the organization. Yeah, she basically yeah, uh, she was a glue. She helped. She she kept you know the community together when once it was established. Definitely, what the community needs is is some some center mm-hmm. that uh, you know that reaches out and actively actively keeps it together. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the experience. That's my experience. Like I, I haven't been involved in the community a lot, that long myself. Maybe only. Uh you know, eight years or so, but having now moved to Korea and lived here for almost four years, which I know is not very much compared to you, but <laughs> even in my short short four years, uh, you know, as I experienced the community outside of Korea, being involved with adoptee groups and my friends and such, right. and then coming here uh, and experiencing the community within Korea and making new friends in Korea, uh, I think the those well of course we're all adoptees we're all part of the adoptee world yeah. the community yes. i think just the um because we are here in korea and because many adoptees are not there seems to be um some i don't know just like a different mindset or different thinking uh and i think also for us like we of course want to network and connect with these organizations outside of 
outside of Korea. Yeah. But again, our struggles are may may be different, or our our challenges or our successes can also be different too. So I've, I I think about that too, like how we can, of course, secure better funding and also keep the yeah. the connections tight. Um, because in the end, we're kind of all in this together <laughs> right. one way or another. Yes. So, yeah. And when people do come to Korea, they do look for guidance and they do look for for answers. And we really want to help them in any way we can. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. that was the whole goal of goal. Yeah. <laughs> the whole aim of uh, is to was to, to, you know, to help newcomers to get help them get settled or help them with the certain issues uh, that are pertinent to their situation and uh, to their experience. So Goal in a sense is a unique is a unique organization. And the experience uh, here is much different from the uh, organizations overseas. Mm -hmm. And of course when you come to Korea it, it changes you. Mm -hmm. It changes your life, it changes your perspective, your view on Korea, on yourself and other people adopt this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to keep you too long, but is there anything else, uh, just to wrap up, anything else you wanted to add about uh, Goal, the adoptee community, anything like that? Uh, or uh, wanted to s sum it up in any way, it's fine. Yeah, Otherwise know. we can... I don't really know <laughs> how, the, how the community is right now, because I've kind of been left out. Well, I've been doing my own thing, so it's... So I don't really know the situation. I don't really have no idea how many adopts there are in Korea right now and how tight the community is. I mean, yeah, it's hard to always keep track. I mean, yeah. we think there's somewhere in the hundreds, but again, that's just like a, a guess. Yeah. And people come and go, as you as you probably know, or they stay yeah. here and then they kind of go their own way and maybe they're not involved or they are involved or yeah. we see them once every two years or something like that. That's so, nice. um, yeah, I think uh, at least from from my perspective, again with my short time here, uh, I think you know people come to Korea, then they experience it all different ways, and then of course they may experience the adoptee community all different ways, and they kind of make their yeah. decision like if they want to be involved, oh, that's great. If they don't, that's fine too. Yeah. Um, if they want our help, that's also great. If maybe they don't need it, yeah, of course that's fine too. Yeah, I know some people are have been always voicing their opinion or constantly involved trying to either improve the lot for adoptees or things right. like that yeah. or uh, you know trying to spread awareness and things like that which which is great uh, but I know some people they just want to live their lives and uh, being adopted is just one yeah. part of their identity well, as it is with yeah. us so uh, if uh, they can find their own way of relating to the community but that's just what I've, I've found they uh, some people may jump right into it and then step back or stay there for a long time and then 10 years later they're like, oh, I really want to find my birth family and then all yeah. of a sudden they're very involved. So I think one of the things that kept um, the community tight was these um, uh, community dinners or mm. events, right? So I don't know how many, um, your, how many kind of public or community events are going on in um, in goal at the moment. But um, right. I mean, right now we're in our proposal period. So, um, in terms of for the community dinners that were run recently, those were kind of just on the side, like to get together and network and see each other. Yeah. Um, they weren't part of like our formal proposal process, but I think we'll still have events similar to that. It may not be a dinner, maybe some other thing we decide to all attend or get together for, but, um, I think right now we're also like last year I also tried to reach adoptees outside of Seoul because I know there are some but of course it can be hard to track them down or know where they are to begin oh, with right. so we're trying to figure that out too if there's like another city or area that would want like our assistance or some type of outreach so trying to focus on that and then of course there'll be events in, in Seoul as well but yeah, I know the, the community dinners were, were a popular thing and we're probably going to try to incorporate other events similar to that or, or something along throughout the year. Um, as long as we have uh, people willing to attend. And, yeah. Yes. And, yeah. But, but it guess, always seems like people would. So. <clears throat> well, I guess it also depends on, you know, uh, 
the demographics of, of the adoptees in Korea. Yeah, that's true. Some, you know, the young ones, they want to do this, and the uh, more uh, ripe ones <laughs> want to do something else. Right. But that's also been the... Um, well, the thing about gold is it was aimed at uh, people coming to Korea, mm-hmm. right? being new to Korea. Um, so there w- was never really a program or for the uh, for the adopters who would stay here for a longer time for those who already for those who already are in Korea and right but plans to stay for a long time yeah I think so, we're we're trying to address that a little bit or find so, out like yeah, what I think that is what's the, probably the, uh, the most difficult thing to find something uh, for the uh, for the population mm. I know I'm coming up on my five year mark next year and a lot of my adoptee friends said oh five years that's like when you need to decide like are you here for the long haul or are you gonna you gonna bail on us <laughs> but yeah well uh, it depends what you want what, yeah, uh, exactly. for what, what perspective you're looking at it if you want to have a pension somewhere <laughs> build up for uh, you know some capital I know my generation, we're going to be working till we're 100 years old, so <laughs> there's going to be no retirement for me. I've already kind of, kind of surrendered to that fact. Yeah, having adoptees uh, staying here so long that, of course, now they're having their families or maybe they'll retire here or things like that. So um, I know AK, that's one thing she wanted to try to incorporate more is that we need to support you know, members and, of course, the community that's here long term yeah, and, and not just for a one year or that's here for a summer or something that of course they need services too but we can of course expand our, our services as yeah. we're able yeah uh, maybe it's not so much for those who live here I don't mm-hmm. think it's so much services as it is kind of a I don't know just some get together thing some events that, that keep the community a little bit um, bound together mm-hmm uh yeah services what kind of service do they need well legal services and stuff like that would be but that you know that could be that if you already have that already have that established with for the uh, for those who come in for mm-hmm. the new for your new ones uh, then it's not really a problem it's more a long term yeah uh, a community thing right so yeah so that might be uh, uh an ongoing challenge. Yeah. <laughs> Just well, that, that. That's, that's good feedback, though, because, uh, yeah, I, I was under the impression that it would be nice to expand our services for people that have been here a while that, you know, are thinking about staying here long-term retiring or children and all that stuff. Yes. Um, but if... Uh, if just having a networking event every couple of months is great, then that that's easy to do. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't think I don't think it has to be something you know, really, uh, really deep and profound. Just, um, but it should be something that you know would arise that would um, kind of spark the interest. Mm-hmm. Something that would f- they would find uh, uh, interesting enough to to attend. Right. But what that is, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Got to figure thing, it out yeah, first. Yes. So, um, yeah, so maybe, I don't know, I think they tried having questionnaires asking what they want, what they want or what they need. And every time the answer's been like, I don't know, (laughs) something, yeah, Yeah. but. Yeah, we, um, I mean, even with uh, other things we've done, we try to ask and of course people may or may not give their answer and then once they do we say okay great we'll do that and then we do it and no one wants to take advantage of it it's like we're giving you what you want why don't you want it so yeah yeah i for again for us i think it it does like relate back to the funding thing like if um if we can find uh the resources to do something and of course we'll do it but we don't always have those resources so i was thinking well i think also this locality Mm. Of, of the of the goal office right should be more central I mean I remember when I first when I got the job when I started as the adoption services director mm-hmm. we were in Yongdong it's very yeah, good Amy, very, yes. Amy said that too yes at the uh, UN um, UNICEF mm-hmm. was UNICEF place that was a really good spot but but, the, but it was also very uh, very fortunate to, to 
to have been able to been there, locate, been located there for so long. Mm-hmm. So what they need is a, I think, yeah, the funding man. We need a, a space where you, an open space where people can come in and you don't have to travel that far, mm-hmm. right? Where you can just, well, this is not that far, but still more, more central, more central office would be. Uh, might might make a difference. I'm like, <laughs> not gonna say it's going to make yeah, a difference, right. but I was thinking well, it might, it might. Especially in an area where you know where you can do other things. Mm-hmm. You can go in and do some shopping here and there, and you can leave your stuff at the goal office or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, cool. Something. Yeah, like, even yeah. even the office uh, two offices ago when they were in Hongdae, like that was yeah. in I guess a, a good area, yeah. but it was well, like. Uh, it yeah. was difficult to find. It was. Me, yeah. So, yeah. and then the Monglan office. I mean, that's not really near anything. The one before this one. So, right. it was people also had trouble finding it. Even taxi drivers were like, "I don't know where it is." Like, yes. But, oh yeah, and before. <laughs> oh man, before. But I think yeah. there were. But, but after the Myeongdong office, I don't know if there was one before the. Oh, we, Hongdae we office. moved to. Uh, yes, we moved to. Um, Ahyeon. Ahyeon. Oh, Ahyeon. Yeah. Yes. Uh yeah, that was a sad day. <laughs> uh, so that was the um, kind of a what three th- three bedroom apartment we we rented, mm. and yeah, we didn't get many visitors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be nice if we could get somewhere that's uh, like you said, somewhere that has some other attraction near it. So yes. it's like, oh, yeah. I'm going here. Yeah. Can visit Gold too. Or, yes, that's exactly. But, yeah. Uh, again, we can a, a dream. <laughs> yeah, well, we can always keep it as our uh, dream, and maybe yeah. it'll become yeah. Yeah. a reality one day. <laughs> For us now, I, uh, the just staying afloat is, is always challenging, as as you probably know. Yeah. And then, yeah, later it'd be great if we could have a guest house and you know, nice office in a accessible, <laughs> attractive area. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. But All right. thanks again yes. for chatting and giving your insight to the history All right. so, of the organization and the community. And so. well, definitely people out there who uh, know more than me and <laughs> has and have a better memory <laughs> of things. <laughs> but so I just hope maybe if I said something useful. <laughs> yeah, no, it was insightful for me because of again I've only been here for four years now, so and I haven't been part of goal that long so uh, I know it has a long history so for me even it's been been good to learn I will end it here then thanks again all right you're welcome